when you are, you know, when you're doing the mindset work, the energetic work, and you're leveling up and you're becoming more aware, right? A lot of this just really stems from awareness. It's it's very common where you're just kind of feeling different, you know, you're thinking different thoughts. There's things snowballing in the background that help you build into that, you know, that new version of yourself that you're stepping into. And a lot of the time, things will start to drop off in your life, you know, when you're doing this work, right? It could be relationships, it could be, it could be anything at all. Uh, but part of the things that are dropping off is those old limiting beliefs. But the thing is, this old kind of identity, this old um, version of yourself that we're always constantly moving away from and leaving behind, we'll try to cling on to that as much as possible because it's it gives us certainty. We have to understand about our beliefs as our beliefs and our ways of looking at the world. They give us a lot of certainty as to how do we make sense of things? How do we navigate this 3D world, right? As spiritual beings, which is quite a, quite an intense thing. And when we're leveling up, we're constantly pulling the rug from under ourselves with new with these beliefs and then recalibrating our minds and allowing that process to to take place and that can be that can be challenging and it can be scary even last night i was sitting down and i was having this realization that you know we are the prize as coaches as service providers like we are the prize we are the ones that people buy into and it's far it can be far greater than just us as a as a coach or as a service provider, it's it's about something else. It's about something else entirely. I know for me, I can only sp uh, speak for myself in this case, which which is like, I felt like there was a deep purpose within me that was calling and flowing through me, that was far greater than me, Jordan, and who I was in the self, right? But I felt this resistance, very similar to what you mentioned there, Doreen, which is that was a lot of uncertainty. That was like, well, what part am I playing in this? What about the, all the, the things and that, that I want materialistically, you know, is that part of it? And it's like, it was, it was um, really about my, me allowing myself to sit with that kind of resistance and reaffirm to myself that, Hey, you're like, this is part of the process. This is part of the evolution. And yeah. we have to sometimes allow that road for me to be pulled under from like pulled away from us and to fall and surrender to that because where we're going is exactly where we need to go. I kind of touched on it briefly already, but we were we were chatting about kind of um, experiences that we had over the last couple of days, right? Where I was walking on the beach last night. It was actually when I sent you the message, Ryan. I was um, taking a walk. I like to walk and, or sit on the beach when I'm doing messages like that because it gets you into good energy, you know? So I was really just diving into, you know, us as service providers, us as coaches, consultants, us as service providers in any way, shape or form, whatever it is that we're doing for people, Sometimes it's very easy for us to undervalue ourselves, you know, and to see us as, you know, oh, well, we have to put out all, all of this free content and we have to do all of these things for free and we have to, you know, make the lead magnet and everything like that. And of course, all of that is, it's part of, it's part of the process, but sometimes I think we forget about how valuable we truly are because it's not what we do, it's who we are. And people buy coaches, they don't buy coaching, right? So, they're essentially buying you and who you are. So when we're on this journey of mastery, we're on this journey of mastering our energy, mastering these different parts of ourselves to really bring the best version of ourselves to be able to communicate energy, be able to help people unpack things or help people with the service or marketing sales, whatever the case is. We have to understand that that is extremely, extremely valuable to other people. And I know that there's a lot of coaches out there. I know I don't think uh, this would be the case for many of you, but undercharge, like they undercharge on their services because they don't value really what they're bringing to people because they're they're seeing it as something that is, well, I'm already doing this myself. I'm already good at this thing. So, you know, it's, um, why would I charge more for that? It's uh, it's very common as well, because I know I've, I've faced this as well as myself in the past, where it's like, if, you've, if you're naturally good at something, you have a natural skill and natural ability, it's very easy to undercharge for that because, well, it just comes natural to you, right? But it doesn't come natural to other people. That's a unique gift that you have. And it's it's important to realize how valuable that truly is to somebody, you know, whether that's the skill that you help them with or just you in general. Because when we're on this journey of mastery, like this is, this is the work, you know? Many people out there can uh, help with content creation, write a post, hooks, scripts, all these things, right? They're readily available all over the internet. And there's no shortage of them out there for free. But who, what people truly value and truly buy is us and who we are. So the more we can become authentic within ourselves, the more we can really tap into that higher guidance, that higher self that we're continuously stepping into and evolving into, clear these limitations, blocks, and barriers, and really show up as the best possible version of ourselves in 
content in sales in whatever it is that we're doing the more we bring that to the world the more we also have to see that that is extremely valuable free content all these things that we do take a lot of time they take a lot of energy you could be doing something else so it's important to realize that you spending your time with this these free resources that is extremely time intensive and energy intensive it's not just something that you disregard because you have to do the free stuff so it's also worth remembering that as well so i wanted to share that with you but i would love to hear what what's coming up for people when we talk about that and dylan i would love to hear kind of your thoughts as well based on what we were talking about before too and we'll, we'll kind of bounce from there because i don't think that many people actually need a new strategy i think the strategy is pretty clear what people really need to do is become more authentic like that's the strategy most people most people should be aligning themselves to is like how do i actually access more of who i am more of who jake or rob or doreen is how do we actually get deeper into that person because that is the higher self right that is when we're actually being authentic and there's actually been studies done on the vibration vibrational frequency of being authentic and it's resonating at 400 times higher than enlightenment so if anyone knows the vibrational frequency chart where it starts down at guilt and fear and shame and goes up to neutrality and then love joy peace at the top there's enlightenment and that's as far as we knew that was like as high as it went and that's where buddha and jesus kind of eventuated to but what they're finding is that if they measure the the feeling of authenticity on someone that's a lot higher 400 times higher so life is made for you just to be and so if you can just show that to people that you're just being authentic you know we don't give people enough credit for being out of sniff our bullshit when we're lying about ourselves or the results of our clients or we've got like a weird kind of ick about us that people can pick up on we forget that there was thousands of years there people had to pick up on that to, in order to survive. If you were selling me dodgy wine that was actually poisoned at a market stall or you were lying about some sort of tax that you, you owed me. As a human, I've got this intuitive ability to be able to pick up on your bullshit. And so this still carries through to the 21st century. And so if we can just go to our higher self, remain authentic to who we are, tell the truth in who we are, and then couple that with what do, I, what do I have to become in order to be, like Jordan, you were saying, the million dollar man per week or million per week man, I should say. If that was like, you know, you said the other day, man, like 10 exit, whatever your goal is, 10 exit. Um, if you were to make a million dollars a week, what does that guy look like? Don't think about the strategy or the avatar or the business model, any of that sort of thing. That stuff can be figured out. But we're talking about 80% self, 20% strategy. What do I have to show up as each day in my energy state in order to become that person? So I think that's the marketing strategy we should all be leading with within the each week to week basis, mm -hmm. you know, is like, who am I and how do I bring out more of him or her? So, yeah, so true, man. So true. Like authenticity is the marketing strategy, you know, because that's, it's immediately how you separate yourself. It doesn't really like you can, you, like we follow the structure of, you know, teach, share, show, give all that. And then you structure that. Or that's the structure around you just presenting the best version of yourself in whatever way you see fit, you know, not stressing too much about, is this the perfect hook or should I have said that better? Cause that would just improve gradually over time as you just, you know, learn these things. These are all things that we can get better at. And the thing is, this is, this is an affirmation, right. That I've kind of been playing around in my mind, because I think when it comes to the goals that we set, and maybe this is tied to something that you mentioned as well, Doreen, which is like that, those goals that we set, the money that we want to make is allows us to serve humanity at a very very high level right if we look at people like mother Teresa, right immediately you kind of think oh she was you know she just she didn't need money she just went around and she spread the message it was beautiful that's not that's not true she was funded by some of the wealthiest people in the world to do what she did to be of service to the world and to be to really contribute in a massive massive way resources are very very necessary so instead of kind of bending pricing and bending um, our like things around what we think people will pay, it's more about seeing the value within ourselves and holding that and not dropping below those standards, raising our levels of tolerance to, to what we really allow into our lives and then moving from that place. Because that allows you to reflect and be like, well, yeah, I'm certain in myself. And when you, the thing is, when you take back that personal power and you hold yourself to that high standard, the people can feel that. Right, and you'll you'll naturally bring the right people to you who resonate with that, and the people who don't, they can stay where they are, you know, and maybe they'll come around at some point. 
So I think that's, yeah, what you mentioned there, Dylan, is it's just, it's just massive when it comes to authenticity. And it's, it's a journey within itself because what we're doing is we're constantly peeling back the layers. Is this my, is this really who I am or is this something I picked up from somebody else? Is this really me or is this a belief or a thought pattern that I've, you know, maybe just always believed and never really questioned? So we always have to question our beliefs, especially the ones that we don't think to question, which is, I think, a quote from Hormozy. If that's the person I have to become in order to achieve that state externally, that life if I want to live, that lifestyle, what are the things I have to do in order to get me into that state of mind? Because the question becomes, how do I just orientate my day in order to become that person if we understand that being that person is the highest or most powerful thing we could be doing in order to achieve xyz outcome then all we have to focus on is how do we most efficiently day in day out get to be that person get into a state of being that person so the performance routine is huge like what am i doing who am i talking with in the morning what am i what's my first interaction with today is it reaching over and picking up my my smartphone and like scrolling Instagram for the first 10 minutes of the day? Or is it getting out of bed, getting out into the light, getting orders from God, sitting there meditating, trying to like actually become the person I know I need to become in order to get to that outcome? So think about this in terms of performance too. It's not just so woo-woo as like it's all in here. It's actually like the structure of how you break up your day and what you do with your day as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it's... Oh, it's it's just it's the work, you know what I mean? It's it's the real it's the real work. It's the real work. And it's how, how you set that up. It's kind of like Ryan mentioned there at the beginning of the call, which is like getting into that state, doing what you love to do, right? Going to the gym and doing the, those things that you know are gonna make you feel like um feel like a million bucks, you know. And then when you go and you take action from that place, it's received differently. This is the thing, and it's it's a little bit difficult to quantify this because it's like it's essentially when you bring that energy to the things that you do, it's just received differently. People pick up on that through the message, you know, because you could copy and paste the same message with this with a with a different um like coming from a place of energy or coming from a place of like, oh, I hate sending these messages and I'm just gonna get this because I'm trying to get the reps in. Like that's people can feel that. That's the thing. And that's again, we can't quantify that, but like you can you can feel when you get a cold DM from someone, you can tell if they put effort into the message. You can tell if they really wanted to reach out to you. You can tell if, you know, they even care if you re respond to them. They're just sending this to everybody. Like that's received in a different way rather than uh, sending it in a, in a very, it doesn't have to be overly personalized, but just in a way where it's like, I'm excited to send this message. And this is something I shared with Ryan um, in in the DMs as well, but I'll share it here as well. Which is like when you are genuinely excited to share something with the world and you're really, really confident and like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what all the missed the moving parts are. I'm not sure what the what the actual, you know, the the back end, the front end, and how the process looks in terms of delivery. You don't you might even know what that looks like all the time. Cause a lot of the times we're always improving those things constantly. We're never gonna have it all figured out. But when we're genuinely excited about what this can do for somebody that can fuel how you send the messages that can fuel how you show up in marketing and content and everything that comes from that, you know, because you're carrying the sense of like, this is the vision. And I want you to be a part of this because I know what you're going through and I'm here to help you. And I can't wait for us to explore working together because this can change your life because I believe in myself and I believe in my ability to figure it out because I don't know exactly the step-by-step -step process that you need to take, but we'll figure it out together you know and carrying that energy then into everything that you do has just um, been definitely one of the most powerful things that, that i've implemented as well and that's just how we translate this energy that we're talking about this performance habits bringing that into everything that we do because you can send less messages with a higher amount of energy and get the same return if not more that's the thing now if you do high volume of output from that energetic state then now you're crushing it but you don't necessarily need to do that one other thing I wanted to touch on as well, there's some playing around in my mind and then we'll jump into to more questions because I know there's, there's probably some questions as well. When it comes to collaboration, me and Dylan have always talked about collaboration. You know, there's maybe even people in this community that you can collaborate with. It's very, very common in the online space where we're all sitting at home, we're all doing our own thing and collaboration kind of goes out the window because we don't really see each other. Now, me and Dylan have had many conversations about this because that is kind of a... It's actually, if we look at the masculine and feminine energy, which again, conversation for another day, but I recently recorded a YouTube video on this and I talked about this part specifically, which is kind of like a wounded masculine energy is when you are self-isolating to the degree where you're always in monk mode 
and nothing else matters except being in monk mode and focusing on everything and you feel like you're coming from a place of virtue but you're actually coming from a place of self-isolation and it's a wounded masculine energy again conversation for another day but i want to touch on it here and what we want to do to really bring the, bring more of a collaborative feeling into our lives and into what we do is reaching out to people to connect with them. Like I can't tell you the amount of times I've got on calls with people inside of different communities where we're just talking about stuff. We're just collaborating in some way, shape or form. And we're seeing, is there a room here for us to, to share audiences with each other, to do a collab, to do an Instagram live, to do, uh, or I jump into their community and I do some coaching and I just, you know, add value for free. Like these, these types of ways of collaborating are extremely, extremely powerful. Like that's how I ended up in modern autonomy. I was helping Dan out with some stuff and I was very active in his community and showing up in that way. And it just led to whatever it led to. And I met Dylan that way as well, you know, and just so many other communities have done the same thing. And I'm now coaching inside of a sales program and all these different things. And, you know, who knows where that might take you. So collaboration is so key, you know, just reaching out to people, someone you vibe with in the community, someone you just want to have a call with and connect with to see, Hey, there might be something we can do together here. And, you know, what, who knows what that might look like. And, just really moving from there. Yeah. And so I think when you think of collaboration, assume there's no rules. Like, I think that's what it really means to be a modern autonomous is like, you're, you've got autonomy with this game. You're ahead of many because you understand internet literacy of like how to sell and market. So it's like a Rubik's cube. You can pivot it anywhere. You can kind of start to go off in this sort of direction with this offer and then you might meet this certain person who gives you this one little tack that you can add onto your messaging and now you've completely flipped your offer and now the messaging is directed towards another complete, completely different audience, right? We can, we've seen it time and time again of how things can modify and change. Um, so when you think of collaboration, don't put any parameters on it like it has to be a podcast setting, it has to be through an Instagram DM. Like Jordan was mentioning, you can literally message people inside this group and maybe people you've got along with or different time zones that you're not seeing all the time and reach out to them and say, Hey, I see we've got this mutual point of um, mutual interest together. How about we jump on a call and express pillars, express how we're different and what we can bring to one another. And you'll be super surprised how much, how many times just doing that can really impact the overall uh, messaging behind your product, the product itself. And then also if they know someone, I think that's also another key is like, we mentioned in quick cash campaigns of reaching out to people and saying, Hey, do you know of someone that might like X, Y, Z, right? That's the script we use. Some of you have seen that you can use that within the collaboration too. So after you've talked with this person, you might say, Hey, do you know of anyone else that might like this kind of offer? And that's another bridge you can kind of use to get into people's worlds. So don't, don't sleep on them. They're super powerful. That's why podcasts are, you know, one of the highest engaged um, mediums for platforms for uh, marketing at the moment is because of the fact that it's two worlds coming together, exposure for both. That's why I'm telling you mm. guys to, to do an Instagram post at the start of the call and post it on your Instagram. You're going to get, you know, reach exposure. So mm -hmm. don't I sleep love on that. It. I love that. Cause then like, I mean, when you're watching a podcast, it feels like you're in the room with them. And I think that's, that's definitely what I'm drawn to. Cause you're kind of like, you're hearing the raw things that they're talking about. And you also feel like you're there too. So I think that there's definitely a need there that, um, you know, we want to like feel part of something as well. And sometimes in the online space, we can feel very detached from these things. So yeah, collaboration, so important. I mean, like me and Dylan, we've had so, we've had so many conversations, bro. And I enjoy our conversation so much. And that has led us to so many cool places as well. And it's like, there's some friendships that you can't put a price on when it comes to these things. And who knows who that might be for you as well. So you only know when you put yourself out there as well.